and I've been experimenting with trying to make it come out of my skin. And oh, I've, really? had, okay. I've had some, some time where I'm able to pull, make glitter come out of my hands. And it's Dude, like, that's awesome. it's mind blowing. And then I've been able to do that's it for wild. other people. I've been able to pull it out of other people's hands and it glimmers wow. and glistens in the sun. And so Dude. when you're talking about who the children of God are, they are the mm -hmm. shining ones whose mm -hmm. light has been concealed. And it's not until it's revealed, there's a revelation or mm -hmm. an apocalypse to, rev to tell who these people really are. And so... Yep. You, tie, you tied that into what I'm just found literally last night before I went to bed, had to wake up and dig into it because I didn't want the name to get away from me. But mm -hmm. in the Sumerian, the Anunnaki were said to um, be the shiny ones as well. And it says mm -hmm. that they, um, sh they, their skin shone with um, electrium. I was like, what is electrium? That was a oh. new word to me. I didn't, and okay. that's in the Enuma Elish and that's in the um, mm -hmm. um, um, Lost Book of Inki. But I know the mm -hmm. shiny one, shining ones in the Bible and those kind of things. And I looked it up, and it was, it was, essentially white or green gold, and it kind of changed colors. It had a green tint to it. So when you're talking, wow. and, and and so that had me look in the brass. You know, Jesus had mm -hmm. the skin of that uh, fine brass, a brass that mm -hmm. was burnt, and it's like a yep. polished brass that shines. Brass. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what is it doing? It's when you shine it or polish it, it's able to now reflect the light of the sun and show what it's from. But the word brass in the Hebrew comes from nakash, and the nakash are the serpents. So you're like, oh my God, I didn't know brass. Yep. It's brass is metal. But is it and could it be referring to the scaly skin of a serpent that also reflects? Yep the sun or a fish the that has that rainbow quality yeah dude. and, I, and i'm telling up. you how i'm experimenting i can't do it on mm. key but mm -hmm. i did it this morning just to see if i could and it it really depends on how i'm feeling mm -hmm. you know if yeah. how much sunlight i've had that, those kind of yeah. things but yeah we're talking about trying to tie two and two together yes. the children yeah. of the sun the children of light or the children who mm -hmm. reflect the light of the creator so all beautiful, of this is just beautiful. another Yep. pieces to where serpents Absolutely. the devil serpents yeah. the devil maybe not yeah maybe you've used our serpentry against us all this and more coming up on this episode of the truth seeker podcast really quick before we get started if you are blessed by this ministry if you're blessed by this platform anything that i bring to the table i ask you to partner with me via patreon Go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and you unlock rewards. My entire discography of music, webinars, meditations, weekly hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com backslash truth seeker. Go check it out. Won't you come, come and take me? into the Truth Seeker Podcast. Gargoyles, psychics, everything's ungodly, dark savage. Streaming live at truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian. Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in dark savage stuff. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited. As always, for today's talk, my friend Jacob Cooker or Cub Cooker. What's up, brother? Yep. Welcome to What's the podcast, up, man? man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me on your show. I was uh, on your TikTok. That's where I found out about you, and, and you're, you're killing it over there, man. Well, thanks, man. I need to have you on again so I can make you the right size instead of a little thumbnail. Oh, yeah, yeah. I finally, finally figured that out, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was fun, man. Um, how we, 
I said how I heard about you and I told you this and I've sent him our talk and stuff, but it was um, from my friend who was in the band uh, Building 429, I believe it. No, no, no. Jonah 33. Uh, yeah, I'm tripping. Yeah. Jonah 33. Yeah, yeah, I get those those guys mixed up. But uh, Vincent Lechner, he was in that band, mm-hmm. um, Christian band back in the early 2000s. That was really big. Mm-hmm. And um, I hooked up with him years ago online. And um, he hit me up on some like far out stuff that we're all researching right now. And it's mm-hmm. kind of just like mm-hmm. out there. He hit me up and I was just able to kind of just speak to him a little bit and then he's like you got to check out this dude on tiktok have you ever heard of him and i hadn't heard of you at the time and then so i went there checked you out and i was like man heck yeah this dude's like right up my alley teaching you know a lot of awesome. the same things or at least asking the same questions mm-hmm. right a lot of similar For questions sure. and i think that's what it's about so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk about this stuff and awesome um, talk about all things spiritual uh, esoteric mm-hmm religious that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um were you were you familiar with that band jonah 33 dude i used to listen to them all the time faith like this man yeah um, oh yeah you know like they were on air one back in the day so mm-hmm. and and thank you uh, for the introduction to vincent in fact i'm supposed to have a call with him over the holiday here so heck yeah um we've been trying to hook up on a phone call but it seems like anytime i'm off because i stream twice a day plus make videos all day. So I'm like a 10, 12 hour workday most days. Mm -hmm. And by the time I'm available for that, you know, it seems like he's in band practice. He's still doing that whole thing. So, uh, but man, I'm excited to talk to him. We've texted back and forth a lot. So, um, but I've been meeting the coolest people on this journey, man, including you. And I mean, (laughs) I just, I, I listen to you, you know, every time you drop a podcast and I'm just, I'm so blessed that there's people out there with this mindset to like, Hey, let's open up that can of worms. Mm-hmm. You know what? Like the, the worms aren't worth anything in the can. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So let's, let's do it. That's, that's what I, um, I came definitely out of the church culture. I grew up, I was homeschooled in a very evangelical cult like setting. Um, and I mean that in the nicest way, like my mom was not that way, but a lot of the other moms, I mean, it was everything from burning Disney tapes to, I remember one Saturday I had to take the legend of Zelda, my favorite Mm. video game in the world and smash it with a hammer in front of these people because it was a demonic game that was giving me nightmares. Yeah. It was a source. I was, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was like, you know, all of these rituals that we had to do around it, everybody's afraid of rituals, but uh, yet we're doing them in all of these evangelical things. And one of the things I pride myself on here uh, within my work is just an all-inclusive mindset, mm-hmm. every faith, every walk of life. Um, I've got the pride flag on my bio, uh, about half my friend group are LGBTQ. Uh, and I just believe that Christ is for all. And mm-hmm. I don't think that there needs to be any kind of like conversion that has to happen other than within your own ethos to find Christ. Um, and so that's really kind of how I approach it. I'm a big old hippie, obviously, uh, I love to hike, bike, uh, be in nature and just experience God naturally in all his forms. Um, I'm big into, um, Gnosticism. I I read a lot of, uh, gospel of Thomas, gospel of Mary Magdalene. Um, and then, uh, recently I've gotten into Indian mysticism, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the Dhammapada, Upanishads, um, really going through all of that and, just man that it's so good because it's like the same message as christ it's it's all there it's like he's been here in the matrix yeah. over and over and over so there's uh, a there's a reason they didn't want us to read that in church right exactly and the only, exactly. only time you could research yep. or study it was when you was listening to a pastor who was only here to debunk it like you couldn't listen exactly. to the teachings or any of the, or read it for yourself and then make your own conclusion because then we would be like hey hold on <laughs> Jesus said the same thing, you know, Exactly. and who said it first? And that's my big thing. Who said it first? Did Jesus say it first? Listen, let's give him the marbles. Did did Ra say it Mm -hmm. first? Did did the Mm -hmm. Amen say my my word is truth? You know, these things that, you know, it scares you at first. Let's talk a little bit Mm -hmm. about that because we're talking about looking into the other religions and other gods Mm -hmm. and other faiths and this kind of stuff, which is taboo. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't do. Um, mm-hmm. but let's talk about the cognitive dissidence that I like mm-hmm. to, you know, I, I just try to, I don't want to project that onto people because mm-hmm. there's so many people who's like, no, we're open. We want 
that stuff. Yeah. And I'm still yeah. dealing with them like I like it was me, you know, mm -hmm. undoing my uh, zeitgeist fear mm -hmm. of Jesus was, uh, you know, it's the same story as 13 risen saviors or whatever it is. Not saying that it is, but just that fear. Mm -hmm. And you have to make up, you have to have an explanation and rationalize it within your own mind why it's not. You can't look mm -hmm. at why it is. That's demonic. Yep. It's the devil. But why mm -hmm. it's not. So did you deal with that? And when did that start for you of like, no, this can't be true or something? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I worked at a church. In fact, my childhood church for uh, the better part of six, almost seven years, um, did a ton of media and got to start teaching Bible study with like an online uh, media ministry program. Uh, one of my good, good friends, um, is a female pastor. Um, and she is, uh, somebody who she's retired twice, but I got to, uh, learn so much from her and really just get, get into the Bible. And by doing that, I mean, I spent, I think I did it with her for almost three years, uh, on that podcast. And so it was, so, it was like going to Bible college for me almost like it was just the every week researching, diving into it. Well, I started to see some inconsistencies, some things that didn't jive. Um, and you could kind of, as you go back and watch that podcast, you could see my mind really just start to open up and go, well, what about this? And what about that? And I started, uh, you know, sharing some quotes from Gnostic texts or from uh, Hindu texts, you know, just different things that I'm like, this is the same message. And so uh, unfortunately, you know, that institution went through a huge restructuring after the whole, uh, C word event in 2020. Um, and I was actually cut from my contract at the beginning of 2022. Um, and you know, everybody's still on good terms. So it wasn't anything like that. Uh, but it definitely gave me an opportunity of like, okay, I have no ties. Now my business is pretty much crumbled. It was like my last contract after 2020, I had a marketing agency and it just continued to get chiseled away. And I'm just praying. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? And I, I always in the back of my head, I was like, I would love to be a spiritual influencer. Um, and so I had already started a podcast called my Bible works uh, in 2020 and it had picked up some steam and had some good members. And so really at the beginning of 22, I just shifted that to my personal brand cup cooker and just went for the throat as far as let's unpack the Bible. Let's look at the spiritual side of it. You know what? I'm not trained and I don't care. Like we're all here. We're all asking questions. We're all doing this authentically. And, uh, that's when I had my first viral video blew up to about 16, 20,000 followers there. Uh, we're at half a million now between TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all the all the platforms. So we're sitting like right at 500,000 total followers on all platforms, which is I'm just blown away. And and here I am doing this thing legitimately full time. I'm so thankful. And it, it really took everything. And I think that that's what I, that's one of my biggest message for everyone is like, if you want the truth, if you want to find your destiny, your purpose, your highest vibration you have to do what jesus said go home sell everything come and follow me mm. like it literally takes that and for me i i lost i had my dream house out in the country um with losing my business and and folding everything up i had to sell that house at the beginning of the year uh lost that church contract and um one of the most painful uncertain times in my life but within that Every time I felt fear, I just went, I just went into my work, started doing this. One of my mentors is Sean Cannell, uh, that does Think Media podcast. Oh yeah, he he has a very similar story of losing his church contract and going all in on the Think Media stuff, and that's when he finally took off. So here I am, you know, it's going to be a year in February, um, and I'm actually doing this full time where I can like I can make my car payment on this, which is freaking amazing man like i just i never thought you know a guy like me would be sitting here talking to a guy like you about spiritual stuff and we've got audiences and friends on here and it's the wildest thing man it's the wildest thing but but really my deconstruction process was within all of that because 
it was like God was saying, you have to deconstruct or I can't give you the new truth. I can't give you a deeper level of yeah. the truth. If you don't let go, you got to let go of the money. You got to let go of the, I literally sold my car. I sold my house. I sold, I mean, everything. It was like a complete life flip 180. We're going to run in a different direction here. And within that, it was just a huge deconstruction of if I'm questioning my business at that point, well, let me qu- question my religion uh, growing up Methodist and then going to a Calvary chapel for many, many years through college. Um, man, it took, it just took really just stripping off all those old clothes to put on something new. So I think anybody that's at that point, that's kind of my message for them is, um, this is an all in thing. This is not something you do on the weekends and then hope that you get some amazing download from the father. Mm. Like, yeah. Uh, if you want to do this, it's hands on, all in, twenty four seven. So that's what killed me about like religion and the churches and stuff that I used to be involved with. And um, they would have, you know, pastors come in, um, mm-hmm. a new youth pastor, a new mm-hmm. associate pastor, whatever. And these guys weren't really spiritual. Like they were like administrators. They were like mm-hmm. they may be great speakers, you know, kind of thing. But when it when it's like getting in before God or like, Hey, I'm in my study and my prayer time. And mm-hmm. like hey, with the new revelation, God, not new revelation, but what God is doing now, not what he yeah. did. There was a separation of that. And I remember when people would come in to be hired on from, even from out of state and they would get fired or let go. And then they go to, um, you know, get a normal job at, at as a bank teller. And there's, mm-hmm, they don't care mm-hmm. about ministry anymore because they're not working at the church. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, as far as exactly. the, just the way my mind was and yeah. is still to mm-hmm. this day, it's like, that's what this is what we do. Like you said, yeah. it's I don't yeah. get to clock in, you know, mm-hmm. Wednesday night, Sunday morning. Yep. I don't get to do that. This is what I eat, sleep and breathe. Yep. And it comes through me. And there's no. I'm better or I'm more anointed. No, but like if somebody's running a church and you got Mm -hmm. people in your church who are like super hungry and super Mm -hmm. anointed, but it's like, no, we want the guy who's a good administrator to be the Bible teacher. I never could understand that. I really couldn't. Because it it, it blew my mind. It's like a church. Yeah. That got, you know, the church didn't promote that way. But mm-hmm. I tell you this, it is true. I, Cause I knew in me that God does and he does, mm-hmm. he does like whatever, like God's watching, he knows everything. Mm-hmm. So when it comes mm-hmm. to time for promotion or who's going to be my next spokesman or whatever, who needs to go full time mm-hmm. and, 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 and be in front of mm-hmm. 500,000 people a month or a million people a month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not this guy who's a associate, you know, a pastor who's a telemarketer. But it's somebody mm-hmm. who's like really ready. But so those are these two systems that are going up beside each other. It's very strange. Yep. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I remember the day my my mind opened to all this. I was standing in my garage. This was pre-2020, um, or like at the very beginning of 2020, pre-pandemic. And I, I, this bike that's behind me right here, I, I ride mountain bike and it's an electric mountain bike. I had to drive up to Colorado, get it. I've got a bum knee, so the extra boost on it helps me actually go ride. But I put my hand on it and looked around the garage. You know, I had a, a boat at the time and everything. I mean, you know, all the fun toys you have out here in West Texas. I'm like, Lord, I'll give up all of this. Like, I don't care. I just want the authentic reality. Like, I want to be doing my life's work. And I said, Father, I want to step into my life's work, whatever that means, whatever I have to give up. And I tell you what, he held good on that promise because he was like, okay, so the only thing I have left from that timeline is that bike. And it's the weirdest thing. It was the one thing I put my hand on. I looked at everything else, but I kept that. Everything else is gone now. And I'm stepping into this timeline. It was around the time when I discovered um, the books of L. Ron Hubbard, Scientology founder. Um, And I'm not a Scientologist whatsoever, but I learned that and went, hey, there's all these systems of the mind. There's all of these systems of memory within your body. Uh, The mind is not just what's in your brain. It's connected to a universal intelligence. And all of these concepts that they went over, I read the book Dianetics, and 
uh, when, okay, I got a lot of work to do on myself. I'm going to, I'm not going to go and have them do this, but now I understand all the BS that I hold within me that I've got to strip away to really step into. Like you hear all these church terms about like crucify the flesh, like, you know, bury in that carnal nature and all of that stuff. And it's like, okay, uh, there's something to that. And I've got to get over all of this stuff. And, and a lot of uh, shadow workers call it trauma work. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm more of a light worker myself. So I work on, um, I do a lot of mindscapes, meditations, helping people bring forth light from within them. Uh, manifest that creatively out in the world, even for the person that doesn't feel like they're creative. There's always something to create out of that inner self that can begin to manifest. Um, and so that's really how I approach it. And and that was one of the days when I started hearing that. And I'm like, this isn't against Christianity. This works with it. And man, if more people practice these, these understandings of like your self is part of your whole body and like why do you smell popcorn and your knee hurts? Well, because when you were eight years old, you skinned your knee and your mom gave you popcorn every time you got hurt to make you feel better. Well, now you smell popcorn and you get the same pain. Like we are biological computers and I'm in the business of helping rewrite that computer code so people can vibrate on a higher level and tap more into the source of God because that's just not happening in the churches. I don't know what church, what denomination it's all about doctrine and dogma. It's not about tapping into an infinite source of power. Everybody's worried about what they eat in the morning or what their diet and exercise is like, but your mind is messed up, and that's the number one thing. That's why people are unwell or have dis-ease in their life is because their operating system is completely screwed mm -hmm. up. Yep, yep. Um, so, 100%, and I'm with you. Healing. Healing comes Absolutely, to the broken places man. first and, and finally through that. And then being able to incorporate it in your religious practice. I mean, I'm kind of a bridge, you know, for two mm -hmm. sides. Those who, you know, haven't um, had that encounter with Christ or what that means to them. And it's a mm -hmm. new thing. So to kind of welcome them into that. But also for the, you know, religious person, the person who is in church culture, who is now digging into healing modalities or Reiki mm -hmm. or mushrooms mm -hmm. or astrology, mm -hmm. these things are calling them. And if mm -hmm. they find out that you're into any of that or aliens, like it's off with your head, you're going to, yeah, you're going to be disc, you're going to be made fun of, you're going to be mocked. Um, your name's going to be yep. brought up and be, you know, to, as a joke, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I yep. went through it and now I have the uh, badge and the anointing to bring people mm -hmm. through it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And, and to be Amen. what I need it. And I'm sure that's what you're being mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to just, I'm going to plug my book in a sense, spirit realm. Awesome. So Dude. this is, um, angels, demons, spirits, and the sovereignty of God, uh, was blessed to be able to have the great Jordan Maxwell write the forward to the book and give his awesome. stamp of approval. Um, but, I, in the beginning, in the, um, introduction, I, I made it clear that one of the reasons I was writing that book was to um, really deal with a lot of my friends who were starting to tap into Gnosticism at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. so the, the sovereignty of God part in that book is about how all these things work together, this system that God has set up. And it's like, set it and forget it. It's going to work. The sun's going to rise. The moon's going to govern. It's going to rain. Stuff's mm -hmm. going to grow. Listen, I don't have to come down and do it. It's set up for me to work. So to apply mm -hmm. that to the hierarchy of the angels and demons, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe mm -hmm. the other gods or whatever in, in that. I don't think I was looking into the God part. They were all enemies at, at, at that time. But, but right, God uses right. your enemies, right? So yep. I wrote that to kind of combat the Gnosticism of that my friends were fighting that, that, no, that, that notion. Uh, they were starting mm -hmm. to get into like the apocalypse of, of John and, and things mm -hmm. and say like... Uh, you know, that that and that this is the main thing that the God of the Old Testament was mm -hmm. a different God. He was a bloodthirsty, right. blood hungry God, those kind of things. And mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, you just can't see the bigger picture. You can't see that God is the light and the darkness. And he's all mm -hmm. of it kind of thing. So I made sure that I taught on it from that perspective. And I still hold to that perspective as far as how everything works. Like there is order sure. out of that chaos uh, that, yeah. that we're experiencing. Yeah. Um but it goes back to the question that many people are asking now and researching, and I am as well. 
and that's something that you brought up you wanted to talk about, which was mm -hmm. who was the God or the gods of the Old Testament. And mm -hmm. uh, many places we can go with that, and maybe we will, but mm -hmm. um, specifically, there was a, a name, an early church father who held to some of these traditions that Jesus came to kind of usurp authority over the old gods that were being worshipped and they weren't good in those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. set that up where you want to go with that and, and uh, you know, the name of, of that uh, belief and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, you bet. So um, most people have never heard of him. His name is Marcion of Pinope, and he was a follower of Paul. OK, he he believed that Paul received the true esoteric revelation of the living Christ. Now, we see as we read the books that Paul are attributed to Paul, um, you see a ton of Roman Catholic influence in them, you know, and it makes you kind of wonder, OK, what what were they originally? I believe the words in the Bible that are never changed are the words of Christ, because you can read the Gnostic Gospels. You're getting the same words and you're getting a little extra on the front or the back. So I don't see that any of the words of Christ have ever been changed. But I started struggling with Paul. I'm like, what? Like, he's just building a new law. Like, we've got the new religious law mm -hmm. now. And, and the reason I feel that way is because that doctrine has been used against me time and time and time and time again. And so I've got even friends in my life. They're like, iron sharpens iron. You need to quit teaching this. You're being a stumbling block. You're blah, blah, blah. You know, and so a lot of that comes out of like the Pauline theology. Mm -hmm. So as I'm looking into Paul, like who he really was, how's this dude who's, you know, murdering Christians anyway, uh, he all of a sudden has this transcendental experience and now he's a true follower of Christ. To me, that has conspiracy written all over it, but I try not to go there. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Well, yeah. looking for this guy, I found this guy, Marciona Pinope. Now let's flash back about six to eight months ago um i had just read the gospel of thomas while i was on vacation with my wife we did the audio book and gospel of thomas it's like the authentic words of christ it doesn't refute anything he said in the canonical gospels it's just this beautiful representation of like how to live with christ within you it's just it's a beautiful like they're just one-liners almost mm -hmm. boom 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 and so we read that and I'm in the shower, like after we get back from this trip and I have a lot of downloads in the shower. I think it's a water thing. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you're um, right. That's always where my revelations pop into my head. Um, but this, this particular one I had after reading the gospel of Thomas, just gone back to the words of Christ. Like, look at the red letters, look at the red letters. That was like what God was telling me. Don't look at anything else. Look at the message of Christ. I'm like, okay, that's what I want. That's what I want. And I have this revelation in the shower and I go, I don't think God in the Old Testament is the father that Christ was talking about. So I have this authentic moment. Nobody's nobody's ever mentioned this to me. Just by listening to the words of Christ, I have this revelation. And I'm like, no, that's that's a demonic thought. Satan's in my head, blah, blah, blah. Like that whole programming's coming back on me. Well, then I start looking into it, and I find there's some other guys out there talking about this, just a handful of us. Uh, one of my friends, Sons of God Ministries, his name's Joshua. Um, we're doing a whole series through December on this. And I found his content and went, wow. I remember the first time I watched his video, I felt sick. I was like, mm. this makes me ill. Like, this is blasphemy. This yeah. is evil. Like, sure. I, And this programming is coming back on me. Mm -hmm. And God's like, I'm telling you, like, listen to this. Like, you're going to have to get over this. Because one of my favorite quotes from Gospel of Thomas was that when you seek, you will find. When you find, you will be disturbed. Upon being disturbed, you will marvel. And upon marveling, you will reign over all. And that is attributed directly to the words of Christ, written within 60 years of his crucifixion. Um, probably some of the most authentic words we have of Christ. And so if he's saying that, then I'm like, okay, I'm an authentic seeker. You're an authentic seeker, obviously. The name of your podcast, the name of your brand. Um, and so I'm going down this rabbit hole feeling physically ill until one day I start seeing everything that Jesus is saying is taking a stance against the Yahweh of the Old Testament. Then I start to understand the etymology of 
what is Yahweh versus El Elyon? Where did El Elyon come from? El Elyon came from the Sumerian pantheon of gods. El represented by a bull. What were they worshiping at Mount Sinai? A golden calf or a bull. Yahweh hated the Asher poles. Who is Asher? Who is the goddess uh, Asher? Is the consort, the wife of El Elyon, God Most High. Christ is a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a magician, a magic practicer, a worshiper of El Elyon. And you start looking into the mythologies of this and you go, wait a minute, somebody's, me- somebody's skewed the data just enough that you have millions of people right now that somehow, here's how you screw up your operating system. You try to believe that the God of the Old Testament who said to go smash babies against the rocks, who is, who is responsible for 2 million plus unalivings, if not more, somebody calculated almost 25 million. You screw up who you are when you try to make that your daddy. Yeah. It justifies. Because if your daddy's beating you, you're going to have problems. It justifies how you treat people, obviously. You yeah. know, and it's something that we have to get to the bottom of. Like, we have to. And we are the generation to do it. We are. Mm-hmm. It's, we, yes. We're, we're yeah. you know, it's, we've committed our lives to it. and um, Absolutely. Because of the injustice, because of everything. And uh, mm-hmm. there's too many dark passages like you bring up mm-hmm. um, that we just either read over fast, we don't understand, or we say, oh, you know, he was just mad at the time, or he's this mm-hmm. kind of, you know, and there's too many. Um, and the atheists know those, because when it comes yeah. down to a debate yeah. or a mockery of Christianity or say that, you know, God killed more people than the devil, and he's the... Those kind of things, they, they go to those statistics and they know them, and most Christians mm-hmm. don't. But um, we, you have to come up with an answer, and most of us don't know the answer. So here we are studying, mm-hmm. asking God, and then Him revealing it through, you say, download. It's Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. quickening in your spirit. It's in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have to go follow it. You have to go look into it. You have to mm-hmm. open a book and ask questions and then pray, God, is this you? Mm-hmm. And you start finding mm-hmm. some stuff. So um, when it when it comes to that, like, there's definitely so many of them. So let's just throw this blanket statement out there. Like, yeah. um, the Bible is, I would say, um, it wasn't monotheistic, which it became. Mm-hmm. There's only one God and one to rule them all. Mm-hmm. No, it was a divine council of gods mm-hmm. that were under a God. So that God mm-hmm. had a council and their council, it's like a, it's like any type of business, any type of entity where you have yeah. employees uh, at Walmart and, you mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, maybe uh, 300 employees at, 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 at your local Walmart or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then they report to not the manager, but the shift manager. Mm-hmm. And they have a manager who's over their shift and what happened between mm-hmm. uh, seven and seven. And I'm mm-hmm. responsible for all that. And I report to my judge mm-hmm. because we know the yep. word, we don't know, but the word God is judge. I report mm-hmm. to my judge to, I'm mm-hmm. responsible for this. And then he's got a report to, oh, and then mm-hmm. the branch manager and the store mm-hmm. manager, branch manager, regional manager. And this is the hierarchy of what I say is the sovereignty of God, this order of gods. And that's from mm-hmm. Genesis to Revelation. Mm-hmm. So, to, and that, that's news for a lot of people, you know, and, uh, and yeah. how do you reconcile it in those things? Mm-hmm. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. But mm-hmm. when that comes down to it, right? Were there, yeah. do you think that there were like two different, um, uh, I say pantheon or councils. What were there many different councils and or or one God to rule them all, which is the God of this world that we call Yahweh? Is it just one yeah. who's all evil? Like where does the goodness in the yeah. Old Testament come from? There's some beautiful sure. things in there, some poetic, oh yeah, justice yeah. kind of things. Were there? Yep. You think there were multiple gods there? So let me. Um... So I've got about 30 different verse parallels here, and I'd love to go through that for everyone. Anyone that's curious in this, let me start by saying, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm a prophet of this. I'm not saying this is like, 
the divine word of God. I'm just saying, I see it. I can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. I try not to have a bias towards it, but the more I read, the more I'm like, Oh my gosh, this, this goes deep. And I've got about 30, 30 to 40 verses. Joshua has about 300 verse parallels and he's found way more than I have. He's parallels to so uh, like the old Christ Testament said, God being wicked the old Testament. Yeah. And here's, here's how, here's how this came about. Let me back up. So are they, second. are they contrast like, Jesus said this, but that like the opposite was said. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, it's like Jesus would say something and it's like, he's referring to, we always try to tie him and say, he's fulfilling all these laws in yeah. the old Testament. Nah, he's saying F like, your yeah, laws. He is, cause he's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's saying like, not one iota will pass away. I've come to fulfill them. He fulfilled them because he knew he was a sacrifice for the gods. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just as like, I don't believe in original sin. I don't believe we fell in the garden. I believe the serpent was Christ and he gave mm. us the knowledge, the gnosis to wake up mm. to what we really are pieces of God, divine yeah. pieces that we were trapped. And I'm going to back up. I'll go through all of that. This unlocked for me by reading the book of Enoch, by the way. This all like came, the whole book of Enoch, uh, not just yeah, the first 17 yeah, chapters, yeah, which is the sexy exactly. part. And then it gets weird. Yeah. You got to read yeah. the whole thing because there, there's some pieces it, that man. you need. Yeah. Yeah. And so with that, of course, reading Zachariah Sitchin's books, watching ancient aliens, all that stuff, you know, that's weird and wonderful. But then you just start to put stuff together and you go, OK, if our planet really has been visited by extraterrestrials. By the way, anybody can take what I'm saying and you can do it purely esoterically and mythologically, or you can take it literally. It's going to work either way. Every way. No matter how you want to approach it, I approach it both ways all the time. Mm -hmm. So I have on the left side of my page, extraterrestrial God, on the right side of my page, spiritual father. And I think when I'm done with this, you're going to just, you'll at least go, wait a minute. I got to, I got to keep looking at this. So extraterrestrial God, Ezekiel's wheel inside a wheel, Jacob's ladder, parting the Red Sea, the 10 commandments given in fire and smoke, the burning bush, Moses sacrifice consumed by orbs. What do we see? Like we see angels, orbs, UFOs, all of these things, you know, synonymous Enoch being taken blood sacrifices, uh, the Aaronic priesthood, then the spiritual father, the new covenant, the most high God, spirit and truth, Christ, the mind of Christ, the body of Christ, the transfiguration, the spirit, Holy Spirit, being caught up in Christ in the spirit, the kingdom within you, if thine eye be single, compassion, not sacrifice, and the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, to understand all of this, we have to understand that the apostles deeply needed Jesus to be the Hebrew Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. That was one thing that they over and over and over, he said, who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. Who do you say I am? They needed him to be that Messiah. Now, later on, Rome needed Jesus to be something else. Um, I see that he, again, is the culmination of all of these ideologies into the one perfect philosophy, the perfect path to ascension, um, one truth, many different names. So getting into this, um, Jeremiah 32, 26 through 37, then came the word of Yahweh to Jeremiah saying, behold, I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Then in John 4, 23, it says, but an hour is coming now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for such people, the father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Then in uh, John 3, in the World English Bible, John 3, 5, most certainly I tell you, Jesus says, uh, one is born of the water and the spirit. He can't enter into God's kingdom. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Again, he's setting up what the difference is here. And this gets so deep, man. First Kings 8, 12. Yahweh said that he would dwell in thick darkness. First John 1 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, so who's the liar here? That that's what I had to start asking myself. Is it the God of the Old Testament or is it Jesus? And a lot of people have said 
that, you know, there's this whole theology going on online now about Jesus uh, being Satan. Well, I actually say, okay, no, he's not Satan, but he could be Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He could be bringing the light against the God of the Old Testament. And, and what would that mean? What would the implications of that mean? Because we don't even understand who Lucifer is. There's just a handful of passages. <laughs> yeah. And obviously the, the, the keepers of the Hebrew law did not like the Lucifer. But if Christ is yeah. that Lucifer bringing light against their God, he even told them, he told the scribes, he said, you worship your father who is Satan because you do the will of Satan. But so, I worship my father because I do the will of the spirit. Now, was there a back and forth in the Old Testament between a good and bad one? So was there like Yahweh and maybe El who were like yes. competing for the adoration yes. and the devotion of the people by choice versus by sword? Because we see that yes. continued, how yes. they rule and how they win you yep. over, not by your choice yep. of Jesus. Like, hey, who do you say mm -hmm. I am? If like, if my yep. words are truth, follow me. If not, throw exactly. me away. I don't care. Yep. He's like, no, we, yep. we're we following you because you are life. It's yep. in your words. Like it exactly. resonates with, with this. Yep. That same dichotomy mm -hmm. was had to be in the Old Testament, right? But who do you think? Oh, yeah. If, it, if they had two names, would you say Yahweh and El? Yeah, that and and you know it's really hard to track because unless you have original manuscripts, those names have just been washed out completely. I read Names of God Bible and World English Bible, and then I use the Strong's over and over and over, going back and forth between the Greek, the Hebrew, and the English, just to try to understand what's really being said. One of the core places that triggered something in me was in Job, when you've got Elohim, Yahweh Elohim and Ha Satan talking about Job, three characters. I remember one of my pastors was preaching through this um, at the Calvary Chapel over here in my hometown. And he was trying to justify how, you know, Elohim and Yahweh are the same. I'm like, dude, like Yahweh is being the accuser here. He even says, you know, Job fears Elohim capital E. Okay. And that's where, you know, L was again, kind of washed out. They didn't want that pantheon. They didn't want to tie to the Sumerian roots of it. And so well, you here, can look at the characteristics. They don't Good. want yeah. us to tie to it. They're yeah. tied to it because they know they that yeah. that's where power yeah. and truth and prophecy yeah. and everything lies. So they yeah. give us the God of this world when they worship. Yep a version of that pantheon very go good yes yes very very good um and so i mean again this goes deep like way more than we can share on one episode but for sure um, yeah we can just I'm, yeah trust me i'm with you uh months and months and psalm months 80, psalm 82 nevertheless you will die like men and fall like any one of the princes uh and then john uh 8 44 he was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That's when Jesus is saying, you are of your father, the devil, and you uh, do his will uh, and your father's desires. Jesus literally talking about yeah. who was their God, who, who dwelled in the temples. He's saying, my God doesn't dwell in temples. He dwells within. Mm. I'm yeah. telling you, this will blow the lid off of your power. It will so, blow the lid off of it. I wonder, like, where, like, who initiated this? Like, who's the bad guy? Because we know, like, evil yeah. and corruption happened, and they're doing their yeah. thing, right? But who, mm -hmm. like, who, who's the groomer? Like, who grooms the other children yeah. of Israel or the other gods? Like, yeah. like was it Moses? Like, was, is Moses the bad guy? Exactly. Because yeah. when we're talking yeah. about okay. who, yeah. you know, brought this... He was going up many mountains. Let's just say yeah, that. Yeah. And so yeah. was Abraham. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. Abraham was bowing to all the gods he saw, including mm -hmm. Melchizedek. Not all of mm -hmm. them, but more than you right. think. Let's say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, for sure. And, and, and who was Abraham and who was Moses is, is a, a, a deeper story. Um, Abraham's yeah. coming down from, from Ur um, with, uh, with souls. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. putting them in bodies and like some wild Sumerian mm -hmm. type stuff. Yeah. But it's like, okay, which, where did it go wrong? Like, where did it, 
obviously the Bible is, we're going back and forth the whole time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Old absolutely. Testament is like, hey, yeah. there's a new God. We should follow him. And they're like, nah, yep. we're not going to do that because our old God will kill mm -hmm. us and we'll be at war with him because yep. he's protecting us for so many generations and mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff. But I guess to track it back to, because, you know, I think mo I think this conversation, it is for me. Uh, it's always been this. It's birthed out of a hunger to want to do the right thing and to sure. serve the true, the, well, whoever's mm -hmm. worthy. Let's give them the praise. Yeah. And so if you yeah. lied to us and you had us worshiping things that were mm -hmm. demons, which is what the Bible clearly mm -hmm. talks about, then we mm -hmm. want to get that right. So um, it's kind of the this, this seeking is out of a, you know, a genuine place. But um, for sure, who do you so do you think it was Moses that that was uh, the deceiver at the or or like so, said, hey, let's try to follow this other God that wants blood and let's just give him a few, yeah. little bit of blood and. Now yep. he wants more and now he wants people's blood. Oh my God. And I didn't think he'd want people's blood, but mm -hmm. let's do it kind of thing. So here's how, here's how it starts. One of the biggest lies we're all told is that people were worshiping idols, not gods. There's only one God. They're just worshiping wood or gold or stone. It's all about the stuff of this world. Don't worship the stuff of this world. What are the other gods? They're physical. Jesus said, no man has stood before the Father, yet in the Old Testament it says Moses stood before Yahweh as a man stands before another man. So then that's not the Father, okay? So we go back to Genesis 1, Elohim, plural, Father, Mother, Son. Divine masculine, divine feminine come together. When you combine those, the dagger and the chalice, you end up with the logos, the divine computation or the expression of God, the highest vibration of love, the unity of male and female, the Godhead, the spirit of truth, the fractal mind of God, as I call it. It's in and through all things. You can see that fingerprint. It's God That's in good. all, That's spirit good, yeah. in all. And literally that, may, that created in the beginning everything, okay? And it created a being that was light, and it was male and female, perfectly the Logos. We were all the Logos. We were all the Christ in the beginning. And then that got trapped because in Genesis 2, and this is what most churches will never tell you, Genesis 1 is a separate story from Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. You get into Genesis 2, then you're introduced, and if you read in the World English Bible or Names of God Bible or you read the Strongs on it, it says Yahweh Elohim. Yeah. It is now itemizing the Elohim, the specific the Lord, God, actually. rather than the plural God. It says yeah. the Lord. You get Genesis 1, you have yes. God or the gods, the Elohim yes. creating. Yes. And and just correct me if, if this isn't what you believe mm -hmm. or what you found, but it seems like in the first, in Genesis 1, he's creating the council of gods, right? Mm -hmm. There's this council, mm -hmm. whether that's on yes. earth I don't or in heaven, but it right. tells you it, it is the creation of the heavens and the earth. So it's both. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. But there, it's almost like what we would call angels or gods that mm -hmm. are created. Yeah. And then in yeah. Genesis 2, it's like, hey, let's let's create something for them to, to clean up after them, to dig mm -hmm. their ditches, to clean their mm -hmm. their gutters or all of that. Yep. Um, and mm -hmm. Genesis 2 is just some, some type of humanoid, if you will, mm -hmm. in Genesis 2. Yep. Does that sound? Yeah. Yeah. And so basically Yahweh Elohim in Genesis 2, he takes the creation. In Genesis 1 is the only place that says, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. Does not say that in Genesis 2. Yahweh made it, and he breathed life into the clay. It's a false animation, okay? Because we know that when our brain stops, we're coated on the table, we're still conscious. So what Yahweh made is not real. It's the matrix quality of what we are. Mm -hmm. Matter, you know, physicists, they, they're like, matter ain't even real. It's all vibration. It's all light. It's all energy. And Slow it's all down. creating this false sense. That's what Yahweh did there. He trapped him in the garden. This ties to the verse where Jesus brings the wine to the bridegroom at the wedding at Cana. And the bridegroom is like, what is this? Normally, you get the good wine up front, and then when everyone is drunk, you yeah. bring out the, the poor wine. Well, if you look at that up, he's, he, that is like a, that's a sign. He's showing that Yahweh brought the good wine. He brought the garden. He's like, here's all the paradise and the pleasure, and you're going to walk with me in the cool of the day. You're going to be naked, and you won't even know it. Everything's wonderful. It's this nirvana in the flesh. And that's the good wine. But if you actually look up wine and Yahweh in the Old Testament, 
bubbling wrath. I will pour out my bitter drink, my bitter wine on my people. I will punish. I will. So he brought good wine first, and then he poured out the wrath. And Jesus is saying with the bridegroom there, hey, I'm bringing the good wine now. You've had the bad wine. Now I'm bringing the good wine. And so you, it, like, it's all this esoteric message of what is Christ really saying? And as you keep going through, and then you get to the Tower of Babel, who spreads people on the earth? Yahweh Elohim. Yeah. He takes, what does he take at that point? He says, I will take Israel as my portion. What is Israel esoterically? Isis Ra El. The Divine Mother, Isis. The Divine Father, El. And Ra, the sun god, the son of God, the light of the world. Jesus said, when I am in the world, light is in the world. I am the light of the world. It all ties together because, again, the message of Christ ties together Sumerian, Egyptian, Hindu, Buddhist, all of these ideologies. It's all in there. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about it is when you start to see it, it's like it's not just tied to one pantheon. It is it, even Greek pantheons are in there. Like. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're doing a whole study in January on the Norse mythology and where that falls within the biblical canon. Like it's, this gets wild, man. And I'm telling you, like, um, again, I can't say, oh, this is definitely right, but I can tell you this is born no, some it's amazing right. fruit in my life. It's man. right. Like, I'm just, I'm just like, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? It's where's right. The fruit? It's just keying in on the yeah. details. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause I'm just yeah, trying to understand sure. the worldview, but believe it was, um, Elijah. So we know that mm -hmm. when these characters pop up, how their mm -hmm. names change and are introduced, yeah. they are now yeah. showing up under a different order or under a different God or, yes. or going back and forth trying to play mediator. So when, mm -hmm. and, and that's what was happening a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, Jewish people believe it's written in the uh, Mishnah and the Talmud and all these things mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, where certain individuals uh, specifically prophets uh, dwelt mm -hmm. before they came to earth as a uh, missionary to planet earth. Yep. Like we're missionaries yep. to try to make yep. peace between the worlds. And so yep. um, Elijah was one of those, Enoch was one of those, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, and, and mm -hmm. there was different ones. But Elijah specifically, his name, El mm -hmm. and Yah, El and Yah. So mm -hmm. he has both names. Yes. And there's a specific yes. scripture now, I believe it's Elijah, could be one of the other prophets that says, I did know God as El, but now I know him yes. as Lord. Now I know both. Now I am, yes. I'm the balancer between these two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, Absolutely. which is yep. what it's essentially what yep. we are. We have to become yep. the balance yep. between right and wrong and choosing, mm -hmm. Hey, that wasn't yep. working. Let's stop doing it. No, no, no. We got yes. so much money and we can't. We'll have to mm -hmm. destroy the whole system. We'll destroy it mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yep. And uh, you Absolutely. see that going back and forth with the names. Micah becoming yep. Mike mm -hmm. L. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all of them. Abe. Yep. Ab being um, Abe L. Absol or even on. The ons mm -hmm. are the cool mm -hmm. ones. Breaking yes. down their yes. words. Saul um, yep. on. Like that's light. That's mm -hmm. sun. You know, yes. Sam's yes. son. Um, Saul, mm -hmm. Amon, um, Aaron, they all mm -hmm. came from the sun and that's, yep. they were spirit beings that were from the sun who took on bodies and mm -hmm. were here, um, either as emissaries or, um, trying to right the wrongs or mm -hmm. whatever the story is you believe, but you mentioned yep. the light and the sun and the shining ones. Yep. And it's funny how this kind of works out in your own study and your own heart is that I've been studying um, the gold dust phenomena for a while, you know, it's, okay. it's kind of, uh, coming out to me a little bit and, and I've been experimenting with trying to make it come out of my skin. And oh, I've really? had, okay. I've had some, some time where I'm able to pull, make glitter come out of my hands and it's Dude, like, that's awesome. it's mind blowing. And then I've been able to do that's it for wild. other people. I've been able to pull it out of other people's hands and it glimmers wow. and glistens in the sun. And so Dude. when you're talking about, who the children of God are, they are the mm -hmm. shining ones whose mm -hmm. light has been concealed. And it's not until it's revealed, there's a revelation or mm -hmm. an apocalypse to be able to tell who these people really are. And so yep. you, you tied that into what I'm just found literally last night before I went to bed, had to wake up and dig into it because I didn't want the name to get away from me. But mm -hmm. in the Sumerian, the Anunnaki were said to 
um, be the shiny ones as well. And it says mm-hmm. that they, um, sh- they, their skin shone with um, electrium. I was like, what is electrium? That was a oh. new word to me. I didn't, and okay. that's in the Enuma Elish, and that's in the um, mm-hmm. um, um, Lost Book of Inky. But I know the mm-hmm. shiny one, shining ones in the Bible and those kind of things. And so I looked it up, and it was, it was essentially white or green gold, and it kind of changed colors. It had a green tint to it. So when you're talking, and, and, and so that had me look in the brass. You know, Jesus had mm-hmm. the skin of that uh, fine brass, a brass that mm-hmm. was burnt, and it's like a yep. polished brass that shines. Brass. Yeah. Yeah. And so what is it doing? It's when you shine it or polish it, it is able to now reflect the light of the sun and show what it's from. But the word brass in the Hebrew comes from nakash, and the nakash are the serpents. So you're like, oh, my God, I didn't know brass. Yep. It's brass is metal. But is it and could it be referring to the scaly skin of a serpent that also reflects yep the sun or a fish the that has that rainbow quality. Yeah. That, and I, and I'm telling you how I'm experimenting. I can't do it on mm. key, but mm-hmm. I did it this morning just to see if I could. And it, it really depends on how I'm feeling, mm-hmm. you know, if yeah. how much sunlight I've had, that, those kind of yeah. things. But yeah, we're talking about trying to tie two and two together, yes. the children yeah. of the sun, the children of light or the children who mm-hmm. reflect the light of the creator. So all Beautiful. of this is just Beautiful. another, Yep. Pieces to where serpents Absolutely. the devil, serpents yep. the devil. Maybe not. Yep. Maybe you've used our serpentry against us. Yeah. Absolutely. And now we, the whole world is under blasphemy, and now we call good evil and evil good. So now when mm-hmm. we think of serpents, our mind immediately defaults to evil. We've kind of mm-hmm. redeemed the mm-hmm. lion a little bit. That you know, yeah, the uh, Satan is as a roaring lion seek, yeah. seeking who he can devour. Yep. But Jesus is mm-hmm. also the conquering lion of the tribe. Exactly. So we've kind of yeah. got that one. So dealing with the mm-hmm. Nakash or dealing with the serpent uh, mm-hmm. symbolism has been a deep one too. So, and these are and just here, thoughts. Here's my thing you know, the Bible has all these different serpents in it. One type of serpent comes with venom, yeah. the other comes with nothing. It, it, is, it is harmless, it is loving, it is truth. It is shiny. Um, and that's where I, you know, in the garden, you've got Adam and Eve. They've been trapped in these bodies. You have the serpent say, you know, okay, so Yahweh told them you'll die if you eat of that tree. They didn't die. There's nowhere in the text. So who's a liar now? Like, if that's important that they were going to die, why did they not die then? Because most pastors will go, oh, well, they didn't live as long after that. Yeah. I'm like, well, really, where does it say that? Like, where, where was that judgment on them? Because that's not in the text, so I can't infer that from the text. But I can take what's in the text, that the serpent gave them knowledge. And for a lot of us, that serpent is different things in our life. That forbidden fruit of knowledge is different things in our life. Some people find it in substances. Some people find it in suffering a big blow of poverty or a setback in a timeline. Some people find it with near-death experiences. Like There's some forbidden fruit that wakes you up to who you really are and you go, damn, I've been naked the whole time. What is going on? Like, you know, where am I? And like, you're stepping out. Then you realize all the ground that has to be plowed, all the work that has to be done. Like all of these things can be taken back. Even I can even read the Bible now. And I know you can too. It's an allegory for, from the day we're born. We're born in perfection. We know we are God. We're nowhere a part of God. Up until about seven days old, we started to experience pain and loss and no and this and that or hunger or whatever that is. Then all of a sudden, we start to get that knowledge. Our eyes are open. Then we're kicked out of that perfect place of being in the mother's arms. We have to go into the world. We begin to crawl and claw Mm -hmm. our way. There's a flaming sword at the gate there. We can't enter into that place again. I get it's it's wild again it's all applicable to yeah, self but, as but, well as the historical But context. then Jesus is like hey restore the innocence that you had before you incarnated here yes. become yes. like little children children yes become back Amen. like you were and literally his prayer for yep. his disciples and for us in John 14 was that you would know really know how much mm-hmm. you're loved and and what is that love he's not the love mm-hmm. that you you know, I found it in my heart to love you. No, no, no. The love that we had before 
we showed up here, before we came into mm-hmm. this world, mm-hmm. the, before the world began. Let them remember because they don't, they don't remember. Some of them exactly. are, are starting to remember. And just like you say, um, the different things that wake you up, even mm-hmm. his disciples, there was different things that woke him mm-hmm. up. Hey, you are that guy. Some of them, like, yep. it's beautiful to dive into, mm-hmm. but, but there is an awakening happen, happening. Mm-hmm. And, and, they, and they continued to remain awake. At least mm-hmm. Jesus did. And he tried to coach them and to try to yes. encourage yes. them to say, hey, let's watch, man. Let's watch. Yeah. Let's don't go to sleep. When others are sleeping, that's when we wake up because there's mm-hmm. things that are happening um, beyond the veil of reality unbeknownst Amen. to us that that um, our enemies are getting yep. power and they're staying in power because of the hours and the um, gods that they're mm-hmm. dealing with. And it wasn't the sun. It wasn't the sun. We've been told that sun worship and all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff is demonic and, mm-hmm. and stuff. Here's, let me throw this at you. So, yeah. and it's hard. We're not saying blanket statements. These are nuggets. This is what I'm studying. I've mm-hmm. always been open yeah. and honest with what For I'm studying. Sure. But there's almost this notion, you don't, because it's like, it's the blasphemy. It's scary. You don't want to say it. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like, in a sense, many of the stories in the Bible that, that we read about, um, like the Hebrews were like, mm-hmm. We're seeing this come out right now, and I don't want to get into mm-hmm. weird anti-Semitism stuff, but you're for seeing sure, this in sure. the news right yeah. now. You are. Yeah, um, yeah. But where that they they changed something, and they mm-hmm. demonized everybody else. So it's almost like, and I don't want to say this with power and authority. This is a question mm-hmm. that many mm-hmm. of those stories we're reading about the Hebrews, they weren't the good guys but they demonized the good guys who were from or part of at least the pantheons that were more clear about it. Egypt, mm-hmm. Babylon, mm-hmm. Sumeria. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cause it is those stories, but just with different names. So mm-hmm. you get the name wrong. You can't put two and two together. You think that this is something yep. new and the, you're talking about he's a liar and a thief mm-hmm. from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about a people group. We're talking about a bloodline that colors and faces and where you're born, yeah, all that's yeah. mixed. And that's where Jesus yes. and the disciples yeah. continued to teach. So mm-hmm. all that anti-Semitism, forget that. But it's about, sure. let's see what you're doing. You're stealing from somebody and calling it original. And it says that Satan was a liar and a thief from the beginning. Mm-hmm. How are you going to yes. steal from somebody and mm-hmm. or even do something and tell other people not to do it? Don't make an image of anything on heaven or anything on earth because it's idolatry or whatever. And then you go make Mm -hmm. the Ark of the Covenant, which is literally the image of two angels, two cherubs with their wings touching each other. Yep. So you're Mm -hmm. doing things that you're telling us not to do that if we did it, we'll we'll walk in the same power and be accepted. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a lot more questions, man. You mentioned, too. Mm -hmm. I got to throw this in there before I forget. Yeah. Of like you know, Satan and, and who is who and those kind of things. In Revelation, we all believe that God sent the flood. Mm-hmm. In Revelation, it says the devil, Satan, caused the flood upon the earth. Yep. And so hold on, which God? Okay, so you got that. Also, you mentioned the Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. Now we know that in the New Testament, it says God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Can I tell you the first time the word confusion is mentioned of in the Bible is in the Tower of Babel, and they came down to confound or to confuse. It's the same word, to confound. Yes. To conf- um, we're going to go down and confuse them because mm-hmm. they're making their way back into the heavens, and we, we, don't, yep. we don't want that. We need them there on the earth. So yep. whoever came down who wasn't the author of confusion, that those beings, those gods, whoever— were the authors of confusion for sure. Amen. And who hated sorcery, who hated magicians, who hated the esoteric magic, who hated astrology and diviners? Yahweh. Joseph was a diviner. He looked in his cup. He did the hydromancy. He could divine things because he was a follower and a worshiper of the Most High God. And we can too. Like, look. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Dude, and like, okay, so tying into what you're saying, 
First Kings 1838. Then the fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust. And he licked up the water that was in the trench. And people saw it. They fell on their faces and said, Yahweh is God. Yahweh, he is God. They agreed that he was God. He then continues to elevate himself. There's even a verse that talks about, you know, oh, how far you have fallen. You have elevated yourself and said, I will be like God. I will raise myself above the mountains. The mountain so, of the again, congregation, I will sit at yeah. the top. I will be the God of gods. Yes, yes. It's not that I'm not content with where I'm at, yep. but I want yours too. And then Jesus says over here, the calling of Matthew, Matthew 9, 13, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice for I have not called to come the righteous, but sinners. And if you keep reading in Kings, Yahweh says, I delight in the righteous and the righteous will be my people. And then Jesus is saying, mercy, not sacrifice. Yahweh's licking up the water here, loving the sacrifice. He even says, I delight in sacrifice further in that verse. I mean, dude, it's, it's all there. And you're like, what is Jesus really saying here? What is he really saying? Uh, by the way, Yahweh kills Moses, and he's the only one that knows where the body of Moses is. But in the New Testament, it says that Satan, Michael is arguing with Satan and says, where have you hidden the body of Moses? Crazy. I mean, it, <laughs> it's all there. And what's the perfect deception for Satan? Make yourself the God of this world. And again, nothing anti anybody. Like, I love all peoples, and this is not against anyone. No. Because it's about the God. And I mean, look at how many people follow that God and look at what's happening right now. Okay. You've got the Pope, you've got uh, the rabbis, like all of the core Abrahamic leaders are going up to Mount Sinai right now. And they're signing a new 10 commandments for climate awareness and change. Why is that significant? Because the Sumerian coin pre-biblical, Pre-Christ, the Sumerian coin had Yahweh on it. He sat on a chair with clouds above him and had wings. He looked like an Anunnaki god almost. Mm -hmm. You know, that very, you know, very Sumerian helmet on him. You can go look this up. One of the earliest coins they found in that, and it has Yahweh on it. The god of storms. Mm -hmm. Why would they be going to sign something about weather under that? I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know what there is to that, but I'm just saying it all, like, it all ties together. Yeah. And you see he's always bringing weather. He parted the Red Sea. We always look at that as a miracle. Look at what he did. But, again, that's more extraterrestrial in nature than the Father that Christ speaks of. Because the Father Christ speaks of gives us power. The Yahweh of the Old Testament held power for him and would not let people pass until he decided. Mm -hmm. Um. When it comes to something that's been interesting to me, just to kind of like it's it's to deconstruct and and then to rebuild, not to deconstruct Absolutely. to to mock or to say come out from among yeah. the religion. There's some beautiful mm -hmm. things in all of that, and and there's I think the truth of this universe of our that our existence and our reality mm -hmm. is is in that book too, but it's been used against us. Uh, yeah. We've been faking yeah. it till we make it, and we're not making it obviously, but. Some of the names that pop up for me that it's just have me, it's scary because I'm going against my own cognitive dissonance, but mm -hmm. uh, Baal, the name mm -hmm. Baal, and, mm -hmm. and even um, Ishtar and um, mm -hmm. Asherah, which is most yep. likely Ishtar, right? Um, yeah. Their names, I'm going to their names, mm -hmm. like in the, in the Bible, and the names of like Baal and like or, or ba Baal what, though, right? Because you got Baal, um, Beelzebub, mm -hmm, Beelzerub, mm -hmm. right, is yeah, a Baal. Yeah. He is the Lord mm -hmm. of flies. He's the Lord yep. of wickedness, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, Jesus mentions him in the New Testament. Um, Balaam, too. Balaam. Yeah. So there's different mm -hmm. kinds of Baal. So um, mm -hmm. just because it's a Lord, just like there's a different deck. Deck is a... Is an angel. Is it was a king, mm -hmm. Melchaz, mm -hmm. a deck, the king of peace, mm -hmm. prince of peace, and so you got all mm -hmm. these different decks or whatever. Mm -hmm. All of the names go that way. But Baal, the, the interesting thing about his name and Asherah is that their names are like 
beautiful names like mm -hmm. he who brings pleasantness, he who keeps mm -hmm. peace, he who is like keeps peace among yep. the groves. And it's like my because when I, when you say their name to me from a religious standpoint, it goes directly to something evil. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that she who causes the gardens to grow or she who yep. is pleasant among that's really what those names Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And she's the goddess yep. of the of the Bible, the earliest mm -hmm. goddesses that are there. Mm -hmm. As as long Absolutely. along with Eve, Eve was some type of goddess, mm -hmm. if not the earth, you know, mm -hmm. um either way. But all the other pantheon all the other religions in their holy texts mm -hmm. help this make sense it's not one or the other it's all of yeah. them together and you get the bible but the bible yeah. is just going to tell you um um adam and what was the name in the sumerian i read yesterday um it's because you got adam adawam mm -hmm. adama but there was right. another word that was a sumerian word that was very similar to Adam when it was talking about mm -hmm. the humans mm -hmm. and there was different types of humans and then the different gods right. would mate with a human. Mm -hmm. So now you mm -hmm. got the Elohim. Mm -hmm. We want humans too. And then you yep. got Satan and the fallen mm -hmm. spirits. Hey, we want humans too. And now they yep. both have a lineage of humans that are confused, conflicted, exactly. fighting, exactly. angry, exactly. warring with each other. And then they begin to yep. mate. And yep. now there's a, a, yep. a, which I believe is who we are. So that original sin thing, I think, is like this fleshly carnal nature, the nature mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. in us that doesn't have to be told yep. to, hey, take that, take it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want it. Mm -hmm. I do want it. Take it. Yep. It's yours. They don't need it. They had it long enough. Oh, give me mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah, it feels good, don't it? And the other one's crying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah. You right. know, it's like right. that, that nature yep. is in, mm -hmm. in us, but also mm -hmm. the beautiful nature, too, to say, hey, give them yours. Cause they want, mm -hmm. they lost, they broke theirs. Let them have yours. Mm -hmm. Like this is in all of us. And the, the more, mm -hmm. the one that you feed is the one that grows. And it is the war yep. of the, between the soul and the spirit or the flesh mm -hmm. and the spirit, if you will, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. we are, I would say children of both. And to, to, to mm -hmm. really see the one that you choose, choose mm -hmm. this day mm -hmm. whom you'll serve is yep. the one that you've been serving. Cause it yep. shows like, Hold on, you've done nothing but kill, steal, and destroy. We mm -hmm. know who your father is. Versus yep. the person that's wrestling and perplexed and trying or whatever, because that's a good that's that's good. Because mm -hmm. the other one yep. doesn't try. They gave up trying exactly. and they're totally yep. depraved. They're totally wicked. And um mm -hmm. when we read the New Testament, we gotta understand that because they're the ones that the the looming judgment is pronounced upon. Mm -hmm. And we try mm -hmm. to pronu pr uh, pronounce that upon humans of yep. like who you are as just this, yeah. I don't know, I'm going to burn in hell for, for not accepting him, man. It's like, right. I don't even right. know. He hasn't, well, you better know because you're going to burn yep. forever. It's like, maybe that was talking to a spirit that was living within somebody's body that was totally yep. wicked. Mm -hmm. And it was, I believe yep. it 100%. It's a judgment of the gods and the angels, not because even Jesus said, do you not know that you will judge angels? And they're in. Like, but where were they hiding? Yeah. In humans. Exactly. Avatars, man. Like if you look at um, the new Marvel show, uh, Moon Knight, mm. Here, here's what here's one thing I want to debunk, because a lot of a lot of my audience and yours, I know they tend to go here. And I mean this in all love. Stop with the conspiracies. The Illuminati is not out to get you. They're not right. trying to feed you quiet messages. Maybe they are each other. I don't care. But here's the deal. Your father in heaven, the divine fractal mind of God, will always plant a serpent in the garden to wake you up. That truth will always be there in every movie, television show, song, friendship, and experience you have in life. If you are willing to learn from it, you will see the truth and you'll see the serendipity and the patterns uh, my new book is called Protopo that I've been working on. It's a meditation book on the mind of God. It's a Greek word for pattern that we're all a part of a massive pattern. And once you start to see it, it's just this eye opening thing. And you start to see like, wow, we are in this pattern. God is always bringing truth into this pattern. We don't have to worry if we just have eyes to see and ears to hear. Pattern recognition. And that's what we're doing. We're looking at patterns. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're seeing every time something happens, this comes up, this happens, that comes up. So absolutely. Check this out. Hosea and Revelation. I want to compare these two. Hosea 13, four through eight. Yet I am Yahweh, your God from the land of Egypt. Okay. I thought he was from heaven. No, he's from the land of Egypt. He says right here. And you shall acknowledge no God but me. And besides me, there is no savior. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of drought, according to their pasture. So they were filled and they were filled and their hearts were exalted. Therefore, they have forgotten me. In verse seven, it says, therefore, I am like a lion to them. A leopard will lurk by the path. I will meet them like a bear that is bereaved of her cubs. And I will tear the covering of their heart. I will devour them like a lioness. The wild animal will tear them. Okay. In Revelation, the beast is described. Okay. The beast. Everybody's afraid of this beast, this satanic beast on the earth. Revelation 13. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and saw a beast coming up out of it, having 10 horns and seven heads on his horns were 10 crowns and on his heads, blasphemous names. The beast, which I saw was like a leopard his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. Then in the Apocryphon of John, it says, In his arrogance, Yaldabaoth boasted to the other archons that I am God. There is no other God besides me. Apocryphon of John is a Nagamati scripture. I mean, these are... These are verified. They are actual historical scripture. This is not stuff people wrote, you know, in 1990 on some trip in a basement. Like this was, this is stuff that people were believing. And there was this whole war going on between the gods. There still is. And there still is. And Yaldabaoth, Yahweh, the Demiurge and Gnosticism, all the same characteristics, by the way. Why is Yahweh describing himself exactly? And then over here in the revelation of John, the beast is described exactly as Yahweh is. Why, like, again, ask yourself why, audience that's listening, why? I mean, it doesn't make sense until you read all these other verses around it and you go, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Again, right here, Yahweh talking to Moses. He says, go up the mountain and die on that mountain. Yahweh hides the body. Nobody knows where it is. Then in Jude 9, but Michael, the archangel, went contending with the devil and arguing about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him an abusive command, but said, may the Lord rebuke you. So Satan knew, the devil, whatever you want to call him, knew. Obviously, you know, there's different incarnations of the Satan, just like the different incarnations of the Christ. Yeah. I mean, when we start looking at those as energies and vibration patterns, it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. The Satan is that lower carnal desire. It's yeah. the judgment. It's the fire. It's the self-loathing. It's the addictions. It's all that stuff. All the confusion made itself the God of this world. Where do we look? We easily look into the world. I got to go get a bottle of this. I got to go get a shot of that. I got to whatever. I got to go find this person because they're the only person that'll complete me. Or, you know, 30 relationships later, well, it still hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. that's the God of this world. We naturally go there because we're in this flesh. Yep. And that's a, that's a the war. higher vibration of the Christ in all of us. I never understood why am I supposed to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ who I can't see, I can't touch. I don't even know what he looks like. Everybody argues what he looked like. And when you finally get to the point and you go, does it even matter if he was a historical figure? Because he's real within the identity of the Christ. And we've been stripped of what the Christ is. The Christ is the divine feminine and the yeah. divine masculine coming together, bearing the logos. And that's present within each and every one of the sons and daughters of the most high God, you and me. That's what Christ came to tell us we are. Yeah. And so he's, he testifies to that all the time within us. And so that's really where I go with this, man. I mean, I, you know, we could keep going on this and, and yeah, I've done, and we will, we'll whole, do some more. Yeah. We'll do some more. Yeah. And, uh, I know so, you got to run, uh, yeah. appreciate you coming on, hanging out with me. And this is a, a subject that we're going to be exploring a lot more in a lot more detail. And, um, we all have yeah. pieces of it, you know, but it's definitely Absolutely. something and it's not yeah. just something that happened, but it is something that is happening. Yes. Like this same yeah. story is happening yeah. now. Hence you yeah. can put your, 
you know, you've mm-hmm. been through a lot of the same things that mm-hmm. the Israelites been through and you've been through a lot of the same and you're yeah. hopefully going to become start start mm-hmm. going through some of the things Jesus went through because that's once you're of that yeah. new order of your father in heaven and Amen. then your life begins to line up with yeah. that. And so that's the 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 the, the path of the the narrow path if you will. Yeah. So yeah. Man, I love exploring this stuff. We'll yep. do it even more, bro. Where can people find you at cool. really quick before we jump off? Uh, the easiest place is www.cubcooker.com. Cubcooker.com. I've got all my stuff over there. I've got my book, my t-shirts, my community. Um, I've got my Facebook group, all of my socials, as well as my podcast. Uh, and Derek, I'll have you on again very soon while I know how to make you bigger and, and more side by side. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll redo it, man. But thank you for having me on and just for having an open mind. Thank you, God, that there are people out there that, that want to know. Again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying, here's the data I have. Current data sets are saying this. And just like a scientist, I continue to approach spirituality like a scientist. Run that data. What does it say? How can I apply it creatively in my life? And does that bear the fruit of love, acceptance, unity, joy, peace? Or is it bearing fruit of confusion, self-loathing, doubt, fear? Uh, Jesus said, look for the fruit. And that's the number one way I know if I'm on the right path. What's up, puppy? He's like, I need to go outside, man. (laughs) Puppy, literally. That's I'm with awesome, you, man. man. It's all about that fruit. Yeah. And that's how you tell who that's the fathers I mean. are. It's yeah. not because their skin color. It's not because of the size of their nose. Amen. Yep. Black, white, Jew, brown, yep. none of that. Because you, and, and, and it was made clear that whoever yep. did the mixing did a great job of being able to hide amongst the mixed multitude. Yes. And you can't tell them yes. apart. And the, the New Testament tells you yep. how to tell them apart. And it's yep. not by skin color by that's any good means. man i love that that's a really good like very good insight i love that yes sir Beautiful. i've been there done that i was a hebrew yeah. israelite so <laughs> i had to come out of that too yeah and i had yeah. to retrain my brain and uh, so mm-hmm. yeah i learned yeah learned some stuff so we'll do it again brother thank you so much man thank you man god bless you appreciate you man jacob cougar ladies and gentlemen bless bro thanks Yo, so much That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.